All right, everybody, we're back. Um, this is exactly where we left off last time. Um, we had plotted these two points here, and they were at coordinates A, B, uh, that's this guy, and coordinates U, V, that's this guy over here. Um, and through some clicking around with our little arrows, um, I we discovered that uh, these values of negative 0.8 for the weight and negative 0.6 for the bias seem to uh, go through these points pretty well. But I was wondering, maybe there's, is that, is that really the best solution? Is that the solution that the algorithm would find if we ran it numerically? Um, and so, in an effort to make this even more visual, um, I've done quite a bit of stuff. What I've done is created a Python script, which is right here. Um, I'm not going to go through it at all. But what it does, well, among other things, um, it generates a plot. And let me just show you the plot right now. Here it is. OK, so what you're looking at here is the error function. This is a contour plot of the error function. And these black lines are the level curves. Over here, you can see 0 0.720. That's the value of the error function at this particular point in the weight space. So what is the weight space? Uh, the weight space is actually what we're traversing when the backpropagation algorithm is running. Uh, we're given a set of inputs. We know what we want the outputs to be. All of those are fixed, and we just iterate through each one. What we're really doing is looking at the different values of the weights here and biases. Um, and we are looking at how the error function is affected locally by that particular you know, weight and uh, bias pair. Um, and then we're adjusting them a little bit and checking it again. So what you're looking at here is on the x-axis between negative 5 and 5, I plotted the error function for weight values. Sorry, we're, we're still looking at the exact same uh, same exact picture. This guy right here. I'm sorry, this guy right here. Where we have a, um, let's see if I could zoom this in. Like this. Okay, so we just have still our single, our single neuron, one weight, one bias. Um, it goes through the regular sigmoid transfer function. That's right here. And we plot the error surface. This is all the exact same thing as yesterday. And in fact, this error surface is based on the same two data points as you just saw. So if we go back over here, this is the code. Here's my input data. The x coordinates are 1 and negative 3.5. The corresponding outputs are 0.2 and 0.9. And those are exactly these points here, right? 1.2, negative 3.5, 0.9. So this is the error surface plotted this way. Uh, for the two data points that we looked at in the previous video, um, for the exact same network as the previous video, etc. So um, along the x-axis, these are values of that single weight, w. A along the y-axis, vertically, we have different values of the bias. So up here in the corner, right here, let's say this is at 4.4. This is um, what the error is if the weight is 4 and the bias is 4. And you can see it's pretty high. This is above 0.72. Um, this line right here, this orange band, is between 0.64 and 0.72. This darker orange band is between 0.56 and 0.64, etc., etc. And I think I just have, um, I think I'm just plotting. Yeah, I'm just picking 10 level curves, um, and that's it. So if you were to drop the ball, let's say, um, on the algorithm, and you picked a random weight, uh, I don't know, maybe 2, that would put you somewhere in this line, and you picked a random bias, also maybe 2, that would be right around here somewhere. And uh, presumably, it's, you know, I'm kind of extrapolating between these lines, but I would assume that the gradient probably points slightly upwards and definitely off to the left. The weight needs definitely to go down. The bias at this point would be headed up, but I think 
by the time it gets over here, it should head down. Um, the color map I have on here is called Jet. In fact, let me mellow out the colors a little bit so that that will be easier to see. Okay, so this is the exact same thing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot this point, right? So here's our, here's our weight space. Air is really high over here. Air is really low over here. Now the solution that we found yesterday was negative 0.8, negative 0.6. Now I have that point ready to plot here. So let me uncomment that. Run it again. And there it is. So this is just from clicking around yesterday. This little blue dot is at negative 0.8 comma negative 0.6. So that's the value that you see here where the weight is negative 0.8 and the bias is negative 0.6. <coughs> Excuse me. That's this particular point. Now, the contours aren't really refined over here. So this is definitely in the region that is less than zero, or I'm sorry, 0 0.08. Uh, but is this really the minimum? You know, maybe it's around here somewhere. Uh, maybe it would just be nice to see a few more contours around these very low values of error. So I can also go over and do that. So let me specifically ask for some of these low values. Let's add in a, I don't know, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and a 0 0.4. I don't know. Let's just plot this. So I didn't like that. <laughs> it's not a comma. Oh, I must get my finger in the wrong place. I'm sure this is very exciting, guys. Uh, okay, let's try that again. <clears throat> okay. So now I've plotted a lot more of the detail over here with these low values of error. So this is 0 0.005 is this contour. 0 0.010 is this one I'm following now. In fact, we can grab this and zoom in here. Um, so this is the 0 0.001. This is 0 0.0001. And it, look at that. It's actually pretty good, right? It looks like our dot is pretty much right right in there. So let me go back. You can see, um, and I think last time we started at 1, 0, which was our value. We started with an initial weight of 1. So let me just, I'm just looking at, uh, well, I'll show you. down here in the bottom left, when my cursor is over it, it displays the x and y coordinates. So we started at a value of weight equals 1, so somewhere around here, and the bias was 0, something like that. So we started right here on the error surface in the previous video, and we clicked around based on what the arrow said, and we got eventually just messing around, we found this point, right, which seems to be pretty good. Now, let me show you something else that this script does. I'll remove that extra detail. So right now, the point of showing you that extra detail is that we know our dot is pretty good. It looks, it looks pretty good. Oh, wow. Sorry about that. <laughs> just moved the, the window. But it would be nice to just see the algorithm in action. Specifically, these are the lines of the gradient uh, and I would expect that the algorithm just goes straight down these lines and hopefully comes close to this point. So it turns out we can do that with my script. Um, so let's do what we did yesterday. I'm just going to go and pick a single iteration. You can't, oh sorry, you can't see this. So this does several things. The first two coordinates in this base tuple are the weight that we're starting at. So we're starting at weight one, we're starting at bias zero, and I'm going to run it for one iteration. And it's going to draw a little arrow that shows that single iteration. So let's pull it up. So there it is. This is one zero. And sorry, you can't see it. Let me bring it up. So there's the base of the arrow at one zero. In fact, I will blow this up a little bit. And it is computing the gradient at that point, which points in this direction and is this size. This arrow is unscaled, okay? So if we start our weight and bias here, after one iteration with this learning rate set to one, this is totally unscaled, 
we'll, it'll move us here. Okay. Now let's uh, bump this up to two and we'll pick up the pace here shortly. So here it is again. Now these are two iterations. We started there, we moved once. The next iteration, the gradient still points this way, so we move again, and it looks good. We're headed towards our headed towards the solution that we found previously. So let me run this for, let's say, I don't know, five iterations. Um, see what the steps are. All right. Now there they are, and you can see one of the things we noticed yesterday is as you move around to different places in, this is the error surface, along the error surface, right? Uh, as you move around, we notice that the gradient, even though we were getting closer to the solution, increased in size. And you can see that here because these lines of contour are getting closer and closer together, which means the surface is steeper and steeper. Um, another thing to notice here is that, I mean, this last step we took is quite large. This last step right here, had we been, I don't know, down here, would have completely blown through the solution. And this is why we have learning rates, okay? So when the gradient gets very, very steep, if you don't temper that down by having a learning rate that scales this down, um, you can skip, you can actually skip all over near solutions and kind of be moving too far. So let's keep it five iterations and make the learning rate, it's right here, let me make it, I don't know, 0.2, something like that. So now let me run that again. All right, now it looks like we're not making nearly as much progress. In fact, they're just dots right now. There they are. But what this means is that we actually get to check the gradient several times without moving too far so that we're not really skipping around any places that we don't want to be. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is bump up this count to something big, like 5,000. All right, let's run it again. Okay, now it gets interesting. <clears throat> Let me zoom in. Okay, so we started here at one zero. We're, our learning rate is set to 0 0.2 right now. And we've gone, this isn't, this isn't the entire 5,000 iterations. This is just until I have the error max, this guy right here, set to 0 0.01, which means we've hit this error and uh, it stopped, which is way over here. And I'm pretty sure our solution is better than that. But one way to check would be to do the following. Oops, let me zoom back in. So what is this point? I'm reading, sorry, it's off the screen. I'm reading the coordinates off of the x, y that the graph is telling me. So negative 0.566 and negative 0.15. Let me try that out. Negative 0.566, negative 0.15. Well, that doesn't look great, right? Our solution was better than that. <coughs> Sorry. So let me go back and let's bring this tolerance down. So let's make this 0, 0, 0, 0001. Oops, this is getting hard to grab the window. Okay, now let's run it again. Oh, interesting. That looks better. Okay, so we started over here, and it looks like it progresses pretty darn close to our solution. Our solution is down here. That's where we started. You can see the gradients get larger and larger. The arrows get bigger and bigger. Over here, they start to get very, very shallow, and then it, in fact, will start just drawing dots when it can't draw them uh, anymore. So let me bring the tolerance down even lower. I'm gonna bring it down by another factor of 10. Let's run it again and take a final look. Looks pretty good. Let me zoom in. You can see we're getting pretty close to our solution here. This is at negative 0.79, negative 0.56, negative 0.79, negative 0.56. Boom! 